With Bex hybrids, we know that farming is important work and that it can also be dangerous. That's why in season two of Bex Day Ever, we're exploring stories of rural rescuers who protect farmers and their communities. I'm Nate Furley, Regional Business Manager for Bex Hybrids and a volunteer firefighter and first responder in Gibbon, Minnesota. In this episode, I'm in Wilmington, a quiet community in southwestern Ohio. The quiet was broken on March 23rd, 2023, at around 11.30 in the morning, when a call came in to the Wilmington Fire Department. A man on a nearby farm was trapped in a large grain bin. Myself and the on-duty crew were out the door very quickly. Uh, we are on the radios calling for mutual aid for grain bin rescue equipment along with manpower because we just knew it, it could be a big incident. The victim was a 76-year-old employee at a farm in Sabina, roughly seven miles away. When we got the call, it was that he was trapped to his waist. They came back and said he's now trapped up to his neck, and we were only about halfway there. I arrived on scene the same time as the chief. I went, got down into the grain bin. I was more of a safety director on the inside, just making sure that all these guys were tied off and doing what they needed to do. I came and got our uh, grain tube and a couple other pieces of equipment, got our tower at the, at the station and met him out there. When I first entered the bin, I just tried to keep him calm, asked him questions, um, realized instantly that he was in a predicament unlike what we'd ever encountered since he was sitting against the back of the bin. I knew it was going to be hard for us to get him out. There were three or four total departments there. Uh, I think we were in the 20s as far as manpower goes. Despite all the equipment and manpower, the rescue was difficult. We weren't able to get a tube around the back of him due to him being so close to the bin. So we tried to make a U around him, but it it wasn't near as stable as a circle. We fought that the whole time. We were running into issues from the inside of the bin of cell phones not working. Uh, sometimes radios weren't working from inside. So we did have someone at the top of the bin, right over top of the hole where we were passing equipment in and out. So I was yelling to the guy up top and just hoping that what I told him that he was passing it back down to the chief. How many times within that rescue did you kind of have to stop and reassess and reevaluate? Uh, several times. It, like we said, nothing went well as far as just not being able to put the tube up against or completely around him. And it wasn't just free flowing grain. There were big, uh, like basketball and bigger sized chunks of grain coming down towards us. They're trying to deflect them from hitting him. The guys inside were working against this avalanche of grain every time they tried to do something. It just kept coming down on them. So they ended up having, to, instead of building a tube, they were basically building walls. The grain was very hard. We couldn't drive the tubes far enough into the grain to be able to be stable. We eventually did cut holes in the side of the bin to relieve some of that avalanche, that mountain of corn, uh, to whether we could work out the successful removal of it. He was conscious and talking to us the whole time, but we wanted him to stay mentally uh, with us and not panic. We needed to get a grain back. Um, I knew a local farmer that had one. I don't know who called him, but within five or 10 minutes, that grain back was there. It significantly increased the speed in which we were getting grain out from around him. When the, the grain back showed up was probably when we knew this was coming to a, a quick end. I, I never, had the feeling that we weren't going to get him out and maybe that was being naive on my part. We initially thought we were going to bring him up out the top of the bin. Okay. Uh, we changed that tactic later on in the day when we were cutting the holes we just made one of the holes really big, okay. big enough to just bring him out. After five hours of hard struggle the rescuers freed the victim from the bin. And I believe he got home that same night. But it's my understanding that he's doing good right now. We're all just glad it was over. Everybody was tired and cold. It was a very stressful, very long day. We had farmers bringing grain vacs, trucking the grain to the, the terminal. Uh, the terminal stayed open past their normal operating hours. The whole farming community, agricultural community came together to, to make this rescue a success. A successful rescue is always cause for celebration. 
but the challenges for responders continue to increase. We're going uh, a lot faster, whether it's equipment or just our individual bodies. Uh, we're covering more acreages uh, over a course of a year on a farm-to-farm -farm basis. Uh, the equipment itself's gotten much faster, it's gotten much bigger. I've been involved in three or four grain bin rescues. Uh, it, unfortunately, it seems like they're getting more frequent. They're getting a little more dangerous every time we go. We don't always get a second chance here in Clinton County with the grain bin entrapment there in March. And uh, that gentleman's very, very fortunate, not only for the situation, but his age and, and the whole circumstances that took place that day. The county is working hard to improve farm safety and help first responders with rural rescues. Last fall, we were able to put together an on-site entrapment uh, training facility to do training for such fire departments as Wilmington or others around the region. It allows to uh, get up above it to see the whole process. Before leaving Wilmington, we wanted to show our support for the department's efforts. I think it's really important to raise awareness for farm safety, not only for farmers, but for the communities and how they can support fire departments like yours. And uh, as a token of our appreciation, we want to donate this $5,000 to you guys to use for uh, tools, equipment, anything you can think of necessary for rural rescue equipment. Thank you very much. Thank you. Check out other episodes in our series about rural rescues and join us in celebrating the people who protect life on the farm. After all, the best day ever is one where everyone gets home safe.